Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Princess and the Pea. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was a prince named Henry, but everyone called him Hank. Prince Hank was going to be king one day, but first he had to get married. Why do I have to get married? And you have to marry a princess. No substitutes allowed. That was Prince Hank's mother, the queen. It was time for princess interviews. This was where princesses from near and far would come to the palace and meet the prince, hoping to become the next queen. Hey. Hi. You didn't curtsy. Next. Make sure you curtsy. Nope. Next. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, hello, princess. And what kingdom do you hail from? Oh, I'm not a princess. I work here, remember? <laughs> Prince Hank did not remember. This was Miss Maggie, who had come to the palace to work for the queen. She had been there for ages, but Prince Hank was a little bit self-absorbed. That means he liked himself a lot and didn't care about or notice much else. You work here? What does that mean? Prince Hank was also not very familiar with work. He was a bit what we would call spoiled rotten. I'm a lady-in-waiting to the queen. Waiting? What are you waiting for? The bus? Lady-in-waiting means I wait on or serve the queen, kind of like an assistant. So you're not actually waiting for anything? No. And you're not here to try and marry me? Definitely not. The queen sent me to see if you needed anything. I suppose you could help me if any of these bootleg princesses try to get fresh. Very well. Next. Nope. Next. Wow, that is so mean. This went on for hours. To be or not to be, that is the question. I have the answer. Next. Oh, oh brother, no. As soon as a princess would enter the room, Prince Hank would send them away. Why don't you just talk to any of these princesses? You know, try to get to know them. They might be great. You're being, I hate to say it, a little bit rude, dude. Look, Maggie. Maggie. Whatever. I can't waste my time with girls who aren't queen material. The next queen has to be the real deal. Genuine, bona fide, 100% R-O-Y-U-L-L. That spells royal. No, it doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, these so-called princesses are totally bleh, and I'm bored, so I'm gonna go take a nap. Wait, I, I think there's one more girl. Ugh, fine. Next. Oh, hello. That princess is so beautiful. You look familiar. You remind me of someone I like. Prince Hank liked this princess immediately and invited her to stay at the castle. He was smitten, but soon it was clear they actually had a lot in common. I can't wait to see what happens next. She was very picky. Ew, next. She was very into herself and she was not very polite. Somebody smells like cheese. Not me, I smell good. <laughs> After dinner, everyone went down to the parlor for the evening's entertainment. In an effort to impress the princess, Prince Hank sang a song. I live in a castle, I wear a crown. It's so shiny, it's so awesome. Your turn, princess. Play us a song. Yeah, true love is great, and I love it's not that I met my prince. La, 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 la. Wait, no, you need to go higher. Ah. Now it's like this. That was hilarious. Ah. Okay, I'm bored now. Where's my bed? That's when the queen leaned over to Maggie and whispered, This is how we'll tell if she's a real princess. The plan was to place one tiny green pea under the mattress in the guest bedroom. You see, supposedly a real princess would be so sensitive she would feel the teeny tiny lump and not be able to sleep a wink. Maggie thought it was a little silly, but she followed the queen's orders. <laughs> okay, your bed's ready, princess. Finally, I'm exhausted. Well, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Ew, gross. Oh, sorry, it's just an expression. <laughs> Good night. What do you think will happen next? Chapter two, here we go. The next morning, Maggie and the queen eagerly waited for the princess to join them for breakfast. Did their test work? Had she felt the pee? Finally, the princess came down. Good 
morning, princess. But before they could ask how she slept, the princess said, Oh my gosh, there was a giant lump in the middle of my mattress. I couldn't sleep at all. Oh really? Well, we'll have that taken care of at once. Maggie! On it, ma'am. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Maggie lugged a new mattress all the way up the stairs and plopped it on the bed. <sighs> Surely she won't feel the pee under two mattresses. But the next morning played out the same. Ugh, I couldn't sleep a wink. I could still feel this gigantic pokey lump. So Maggie pulled another mattress up the stairs and put it on the bed. Ugh, okay, maybe she could feel the pee with two mattresses, but good luck feeling it with three. <laughs> but you guessed it, the princess once again came down to breakfast, rubbing her eyes and yawning. Once again, Maggie was struggling to get yet another mattress up to the guest room and on top of a now very high bed. And this happened again and again and again and again. Wow, it's so colorful. Finally, Maggie asked the queen, Your Highness, isn't it obvious that the princess is a real princess? She felt the pee every single night, no matter how many mattresses I put on her bed. This is a very serious thing, Maggie. Do you know how many fake princesses there are out there? No. It's a real problem. Whatever you say, your highness. Oh, here she comes. Let me guess, you didn't sleep a wink? Oh, how many does it take? A million? A million mattresses? I'll be dragging around mattresses until I'm an old lady. Hey, Maggie. Prince James. Prince James was Hank's twin brother. He was born four minutes after Hank, and being the younger twin, he would never be king, but he didn't mind. He was totally cool with just being a regular guy. Well, he was still a prince, but he was very laid back. Pretty much the opposite of Hank. That prince is so handsome. Maggie and James had known each other for quite some time and liked each other a lot. They liked to do not so royal things together, like fill up the palace pool with slime, eat ice cream sundaes till their tummies hurt, and sneak into the kitchen to mess with the royal chef's menu. Goose liver pate? No thanks. Let's just change it to pizza. Extra cheese. Ooh, add pineapple. Yep, they were partners in crime. Oh, uh, what you up to? The princess pea chest. The what? Prince Hank can only marry a true royal, and the queen wanted me to make sure that this girl's a real princess, so I put a pea under her mattress. Oh. Yeah, I still don't get it. Well, apparently princesses have a super high sensitivity and can feel something as small as a tiny pea under their mattress. And sure enough, this princess has felt it every single night for like two whole weeks. So I just keep stacking mattresses, but she keeps complaining about the pea. Maybe she just likes to complain? That's a possibility. Hey, I have an idea. Let's take the pea out and see if she still says her mattress is lumpy. Ooh, scandalous. Let's do it. Wow, this is so fun. You almost got it. Just a little more. Okay, I see it. Get it, get it. Wow, I can't believe you lugged all those mattresses up there. I'm pretty strong. So, what now? We wait and see how the princess sleeps. It seemed like forever until the princess's bedtime. I win! No way! I always win! Mother always lets me win! You're playing the game wrong. Well, my mother always lets me win, so you're playing it wrong. Wanna play again? No, I'm gonna go to bed. Gee, I really hope I can sleep tonight. That bed is so lumpy. Anyway, good night, everybody! Good night, my love. Here comes the moment of truth. The next morning, Prince James and Maggie waited for the princess, eagerly awaiting her report. Here she comes. But instead of appearing well rested, the princess looked like she hadn't slept at all. The pee was gone, but the princess said, OMG, I literally tossed and turned all night long. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Really? Yeah, it's like there's this lump right in the middle of the bed. I'm very sensitive to these things, you know, being a princess and all. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Maggie and James were totally confused. I don't get it. We removed the pee, but she says she still felt the lump. She must be making it up, but why 
Why would she randomly lie about something like that? I got it. She knows about the princess and the pee test. So she's faking it to seem like a real princess. Yeah, at least I think so. So if she's not a princess, who is she? I don't know, but we have to find out. How can we do that? We spy. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh this is so exciting. James and Maggie both loved a good caper. They excitedly prepared for their super secret spy mission. Okay, do we have everything we need? Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry. Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first rule of spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. <laughs> right, got it. Let's go. wait for her to reveal her true self. What do you think is gonna happen next? But the princess wasn't up to anything unusual. She did her nails, she read a magazine, she brushed her hair, she washed her face, you know, totally normal stuff. Wait, what? Uh -huh. What? No, that can't be. Ah, she's coming this way. So she's a witch. Major plot twist, but why the princess act? We have to get to the bottom of this. Maggie and James didn't have flying broomsticks, so they couldn't follow the princess, a uh, witch, wherever she was going. So they just had to wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. The witch finally came back just before dawn. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. James and Maggie watched as she emptied out a small bag. What's all that stuff? Wait, shh, listen. Okay, the recipe calls for the eye of a rattlesnake, the whiskers of a catfish, three mouse tails, one ounce of kangaroo sweat. Ew. She's casting a spell. And a lock of stallion hair. Now just stir and voila, the magic potion is ready to serve. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. So that's why Hank likes her so much. She's been feeding him love potions. Not on my watch. Let's go stop her. James and Maggie ran to breakfast to thwart whatever wicked plan the witch had cooked up. Okay, so what's our plan? Okay, when she gets down here. Good morning, princess, my love. Ah, she's here. What do we do? Wash her face. Hey, what the heck are you doing? James, stop washing my girlfriend. She's a witch. She's got green under there, and she has a pointy hat, and she flies around on a broomstick, and she cooked up a love potion to make you love her. She's not a real princess at all. She totally pretended to feel the pee under her mattress, but it was all a ruse. She's a witch, I tell ya. The witch? Oh, no. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, good. Apologize to the princess at once. Didn't you hear what I just said? Your girlfriend's a witch! It's no use, guys. He can't hear anything bad about me. He's in love. Can't you see? The spell is too powerful! That's right. And now you'll love me, too! <coughs> oh, no! The potion! Now we're going to... We're going to... To... I forget what I was gonna say. Oh, really? Oh, hi, princess. You look so... So beautiful this morning. Ah, why thank you, James. James, James, you're under her spell, can't you see? You're a pretty princess. Ah, what do I do now? How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Chapter four, here we go. This is terrible. Both princes are under the spell of the witch. Wait, why am I not under the spell? I breathed in the love potion too. Relax, it only works on princes. It's a very specific spell. Oh. Why? What are you trying to do? Well, I was trying to marry Prince Hank, but now I guess I have my choice, don't I? Maybe I'll marry Prince James. No! No? Ah, uh, does someone have a crush? Prince James and... What's your name again? Maggie. Maggie, sitting in a tree. 
K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Shush! First comes love, then comes marriage. Oh, wait, not if I marry him. I can't hear you, la 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 la. Wow, that is so mean. Okay, I have to figure out how to defeat the witch and break the spell. All right, how do you destroy witches? Water! Yeah, I'll just dump a bucket of water on her like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. That won't work. And if you mess up my makeup, I will conjure up a curse. So bad. A curse? Oh no. Okay, fine. Ugh, think, Maggie. Oh, Dorothy also crushed a witch with her house. That's your plan? You're gonna smush me with a house? Yeah, I guess not. Ooh, Hansel and Gretel pushed their witch into an oven. No thanks. Face it, Maggie. Maggie. Whatever. Face it, Maggie. I'm going to marry the prince, and you can't stop me. Why do you even want to marry the prince anyway? Aren't we just supposed to marry, like, wizards or ogres or something? Seriously? What? You don't think witches grow up reading fairy tales, too? They do? Yes! And all my life, deep down, I've known that I'm really supposed to be a princess. So when I heard there was a real prince looking for a princess, well, I put on my dress and I hightailed it over here. Ooh, that makes sense. Don't you think it's a little messed up that you used the love potion on Hank? I wanted him to like me. Honestly, I think you guys have a lot in common. I think he'd like you anyways. Really? You think so? Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I think James likes you too, by the way. Really? I mean, yeah, I guess he's pretty cool. I was only kidding when I said that I might marry him. It doesn't matter. I'm not a princess. I don't know if you noticed, but I wear the same dress literally every single day. Well, except today. These are my spy clothes. Wait, I just got a great idea. Let's do a princess makeover! Fun! Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Their princess makeover party was so much fun. The girls barely noticed that they were totally bonding. Could they really become friends? They sure looked like besties. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you do know this doesn't technically make me a princess, right? Who cares? If you feel like a princess, you're a princess. End of story. Now let's go get Hank and James and go have some fun. <laughs> princess, my love. No, she's my love. Um, I think you have to break the spell first. Oh, right. Do you have any lizard's tails or grasshopper belly buttons? Uh, not on me. Well, that was weird. <laughs> I'll just try a chant. All right, let's see. This should work. Loveth spell brachioso. What happened? I feel weird. Hey, Maggie, cool dress. <laughs> this whole thing? <laughs> Hey, I got an idea. Let's go play mini golf and get some ice cream. Great idea. OMG, I love it. So the four went out on a double date and had a blast. The princess witch was nervous to reveal her true identity to Prince Hank, but he thought it was pretty cool. Ice creamiosa magicus flyeth into my mouth. <laughs> That is amazing! This is seriously so much cooler than being royalty. It took a little convincing for the queen to come around, but she realized that having a royal family member with magical powers could come quite in handy. But most importantly, she saw how happy the princess witch and Hank were. The queen did have one question, though. So did you really feel the pee under all those mattresses? No, I read about that in a fairy tale once, so I thought it was worth a shot. The queen also approved the match between James and Maggie. They were obviously perfect for each other. Yay! So the story ends with the happiest of fairy tale endings. Not just one true love, but two. And a couple of girls who grew up loving fairy tales became real princesses. Pretty cool. Oh, happily ever after. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Uh-oh, I hope it's not the wolf. The big bad wolf? He huffs, and he puffs, and he... Probably not him. <laughs> Who's there? <clears throat> who is there? Fleas! Fleas who? Fleas, open the door! 
I have mission to tell you. I am a changed wolf. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. Hi, kids. I'm Miss Booksy, and this is story time. Today, we're reading Rumpelstiltskin. Wiggle, snap, story time. Long, long ago, there was a dad, and he had a kid. A daughter, actually. That's me. <laughs> Together, we made fine designer clothing. The clothes we made were so fancy that the king wanted to wear them. The clothes you make are fantastic. Ah, oh, gee, thank you, king. Thanks, a whole kit and caboodle. But my daughter's the real artist. She's so delicate when she's spinning. I bet she could spin straw into gold. Well, as you might know, kings like gold. They like gold a lot. Gold, you say? Hmm. I'd like to meet this daughter of yours. Send her to my castle for brunch this Sunday. We'll have melba toast and salmon locks. So that Sunday, I went to the king's castle for brunch. But instead of melba toast and salmon locks, oh, I got horse hay and dungeon locks. Oh dear, the king locked me away in the dungeon. What? No, that can't be. You can come out once you spin all this straw into gold. I didn't actually know how to spin straw into gold. That was just a figure of speech. Somebody please help me! Why, hello there. A little elf man appeared. I see you need to sew some straw into gold. That happens to be my specialty. Mm, that's pretty random. <laughs> but okay, I don't have much, but I'll give you anything. Hmm, how about that necklace of yours? It's very pretty. And even though this necklace was a gift for my BFF Snow White, I made the deal. I couldn't be stuck in this stinky dungeon forever. What would you do if you were there? The elf man worked his magic. He sang while he worked, which was kind of annoying, but he was helping me out. <laughs> when the king came back in the morning, the hay was gone. And in its place, pure gold. The king was utterly flabbergasted. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Well, I'm pretty good at this, uh, obviously. <laughs> good! I want more! So this time I'm going to give you 100 times the hay. If you can spin it all to gold by morning, I will let you out. But if not, you will be sent out into the ocean on a leaky ship, never to return! Oh, and the ship will be full of singing mice, who are terrible singers. <laughs> now get back to sewing. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Mean? So night came and I didn't know what else to do, so I, I called out. Uh, hey, magic little dude. Um, I forgot your name, but I, uh, I need you. So, you need more help, do you? I do, I do, I do. It's gonna cost you. Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Pinky promise. Again, he sang as he worked. Spinning, sewing, gold glowing, taking hay and making it pay. It took all night, and I got seriously tired of that song. But my little friend sewed every last bit of straw into gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How much do I owe you? On the night of your first son's first birthday, I will return to take him as my own. Wow, that is so mean. And he laughed all crazy-like and oh, disappeared. Wait, what? He didn't say he was going to take my son on his first birthday, did he? Nah, that would be crazy. The next day, the king saw all that gold and he was so excited, he let me go. So fast forward a bit. I'm in charge of my own designer clothing company. I'm married, I have a super cool house, a dog and a cat. I had forgotten all about the little elf who had spun straw into gold. I was living happily ever after. Until the night of my first son's first birthday. We were all celebrating, having a great time when the little old elf crashed the party. Here I am, give me that baby. Ah, watch out. Okay, funny story. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Not really. 
You made a pinky promise. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. But if you don't, I'll take him and your first daughter. Do we have a deal? I began to guess. Paul, no, Mike, no, Mark, no, Sean. Uh -uh. Sean spelled S-E-A-N. Nope. Sean spelled S-H-A-U-N. Not even close. Mm, Tim, nope. Tom, nope. Tyler, nope. Taylor, uh -uh. Kanye, Dragon. Senior, nope. Junior. Nope. Oh, nope. I guess hundreds of names, hundreds upon hundreds of names, but I just couldn't come up with it. To make matters worse, the horrible little elf was leaning over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. That's my job. I'll have a son, I'm gonna win. She'll never guess my name, cause it's Rumpelstiltskin. Just then, the baby giggled and spoke his very first word. He said, Rumpelstiltskin. Everyone was so excited, as they always are when babies say their first words. What did he say? Nothing. Um, I think he wants his bottle. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, no. But seriously, we called the police a long time ago anyway. You think you're just gonna come in here and take my baby? I'm his mom. <laughs> you're a bad elf and you're going to jail. And so we were free from Rumpelstiltskin forever. So my family went on a vacation cruise to celebrate and the mice on this ship were excellent singers. <laughs> the brunch buffet was pretty good too. Smoked salmon with poi-fection, mwah! The end. Wow, that was so much fun. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time, bye. Hi kids, welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. What story should we read today? Hmm, let's spin the magic wheel. Goldilocks. Wiggle, snap, story time. Let's go! Story time, story time. Miss Booksy's gonna meet you inside. Her magic books, Cinderella's dress in blue. Goldilocks and spinning clock. Wiggle, snap, wiggle, snap. Everybody wiggle, snap. Wiggle, snap, wiggle, snap. Everybody wiggle, So there once was a young girl named Goldilocks. She had beautiful, long, golden hair. Goldilocks, oh Goldilocks. Hey mom, do I have to do my homework? <laughs> no, I just wanted to ask what you wanted to do for your birthday? Well, I've always wanted to go on a camping trip with my friends. Sounds like a great idea. Why don't you call them up and invite them? Hey Walla. Hi Goldie, sup? Want to do a camping trip with me this weekend? Ooh, you know I'm up for anything. Yes, let's call Zorro. Hi, guys. Zorro, are you ready for a super amazing adventure this weekend? Um, maybe. Camping trip, camping trip, camping trip. <laughs> We're going on a camping trip to celebrate my birthday. You know you're coming with. Um, I think I have to wash my hair. Come on, Zorro, you can wash your hair in nature's shower. We'll all stick together and if things get hairy, we'll just come back and camp out at my house. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah, I think I can do that. So they all packed their bags for their camping trip. They met up and went on their way. This is gonna be so much fun. I packed lots of games and flashlights and of course snacks. Yeah, maybe you should pull that flashlight out right now. It's starting to get dark. Uh, and I just felt a raindrop. Oh man, our tent is not waterproof. Hey, I see a light over there. Come on, let's go. Good. I hope they're home. Oh. Uh, sorry guys, that doorbell woke me up from my evening nap. You scared me. I wasn't scared. <laughs> Is there something I can help you with? 
Well, we're on a camping trip. But like, it's really cold and dark and creepy. And we just wanted to take a break somewhere warm. <laughs> oh well, the bear family always- Bears? Did you say bears? Where? Who? What? So, um, a family of bears lives in this house? Yeah, big, proud, large, hungry, hairy bears. Oh. Um, maybe we should just step back. This way. No, oh, they aren't even home. Oh. Let me tell you a little about this bear family. So there was Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. I'm not really a baby. I'm like a big kid. But everyone still calls me baby. Oh, well. Well, who are you talking to, baby? Uh, no one. Okay, clean up your place. Okay, Ma. Hold on. Let me get this on camera. Wait a minute. Why would the Papa Bear film the family doing literally nothing special? Because they're a family of bear vloggers. Ooh, actually, I think I've seen their channel before. Yeah, they just film their daily lives. Oh. Back to the story. So while Papa Bear was filming Baby cleaning up her breakfast, he heard a loud knock at the door. Who could that be so early in the morning? Um, ho there, friend. How can I help you? Hello, bear family. I'm here to present you with a challenge. Ooh, I love challenges! This is a scavenger hunt, and all the family vloggers are participating. Here's your briefcase. One quick question, businessman. Goodbye. Um, okay. Open it, open it, open it. Okay, let's see. The first clue says, see if you can keep up the pace, meet at the wolf's house for a race. Let's go. So the bear family sped off to the big bad wolf's house. <laughs> I've been waiting for some victims. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, participants to come and race me. Let's go, wolf. Wait, so who won the race? I hope it was Baby Bear. Well... A tie? Ugh, I do not like a tie. Wolves like to win. Wanna go again? No. Ugh, I have to go scare some little pigs now. Whatever. Here is your next card. It says, your next challenge is to work together and bake Go get ingredients for strawberry cupcake. Mmm, my favorite. So they went to the store to get yummy ingredients. So, what happened next? I don't know. They're still at the store. They've been at that store for a while, though. Ooh, I hope they come back soon, because I love, love, love strawberry cupcakes. With sprinkles on top? Yeah. So, uh, is there something I could help you with? Oh, sorry. I mean, maybe we can just go inside for a few minutes to take a little break. Yeah, I need to put my tootsies up. We've been walking for hours. Zorro, it's literally been like seven minutes. Still, I'm tired, okay? You think they'd mind, Bird? Ah, uh, not at all. They're very welcoming. I'll stay out here and keep watch for any mountain lions. Mountain lions? Well, they sure left in a rush. Yeah, look at this place. Whoa! Ah, this is the life. Ooh, here's a big giant eggplant parmesan. <coughs> nah, too tomato-y. And here's a kind of mommy-sized fruit salad. Mm, I don't know, a little too tart. Oh look guys, a teeny tiny little baby-sized smoothie. Ooh, come on, have a try. Ah, just, just right. right. Now let's go see about some chairs. Uh-oh. So Goldilocks and her friends made themselves comfortable at the bear's house. Those bears weren't coming back anytime soon, were they? Thanks for coming to Storytime. Can't wait to read more stories with you at Storytime soon. Bye. Time for story time games. Here we go. Let's play Spot the Difference. Goldilocks, can you spot all the differences in these scenes from the story? Here we 
go! Hey, Mom. <laughs> do I have to do my homework? <laughs> no. I just wanted to ask what you wanted to do for your birthday? Well, I've always wanted to go on a camping trip with my friends. Sounds like a great idea. Why don't you call them up and invite them? Hey, Walla. Hi, Goldie. Sup? Hold on. Did you see something? Let's <laughs> rewind. What seems different to you? Look at this. This wasn't here before. All right, let's watch another scene. Here we go. They met up and went on their way. This is gonna be so much fun. I packed lots of games and flashlights and of course snacks. Yeah, maybe you should pull that flashlight out right now. It's starting to get dark. Uh, and I just felt a raindrop. Oh man, our tent is not waterproof. Hey, I see a light over there. Come on, let's go. Good. I hope they're home. <laughs> Oh. <sighs> you scared me. Pause. Did you see something? Rewind. <laughs> what seems different to you? Look over here. This color is different. All right, let's watch another scene. Maybe we can just go inside for a few minutes to take a little break. Yeah, I need to put my tootsies up. We've been walking for hours. Zorro, it's literally been like seven minutes. Still, I'm tired, okay? You think they'd mind, Bird? Uh, not at all. They're very welcoming. I'll stay out here and keep watch for any mountain lions. Mountain lions? Well, they sure left in a rush. Yeah, look at this place. Whoa! <gasps> ah, this is the life. Ooh! Here's a big, giant eggplant parmesan. <coughs> nah, too tomato-y. Wait a minute, did you spot the difference? Let's watch that again. What seems different to you? Right over there. How did this get here? That's the last one. Did you find all of them? Nice work. Today we're reading Goldilocks and the Three Bears Solve the Scavenger Hunt. Wiggle, snap, story time! Man, I'm really getting sleepy. We should find somewhere to rest. Exploration time! So the group of friends tried out the first bed. It was really big though, so they felt way too far apart. Guys, I think this bed is too... Lonely. Huh? I can't hear all the way over here. Guys, I say we try the next room. Let's go! But since the bed was round, whoa, whoa, I can't keep my balance. Whoa. Yeah, sorry guys, this bed is too wobbly. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> next. OMG, you guys, look. This looks. Just right. right. Yeah. Meanwhile, we are home! Whoa, whoa. Oh, hold on, there's. Uh, uh, uh oh. What happened here? Somebody's been eating my eggplant parmesan. And someone's been eating my fruit salad. Hey, I wanted that, it was organic. And someone drank all my smoothie. What in the what? To our rooms. <gasps> Someone is sleeping in my tent. <gasps> uh oh. Please explain yourselves, strangers. And did you eat my fruit salad? She, she did, did it. it. Please don't bite me. What? I would never. I'm vegan. I have a better idea. Why don't they help us make cupcakes? Did somebody say cupcakes? <gasps> Sounds like a great compromise. Yay! I hope you don't mind being filmed. We're vlogging our whole treasure hunt. Cool. Come on, let's get the ingredients together. Ho, 
Oh, no, that was hilarious. Do it again. But then they opened the strawberries. Their next clue was inside. It says, join me at my royal castle tonight. Singing, dancing, and snacks. It'll be a sight. Don't let this fun opportunity pass and bring back my slipper of glass. Guys, I think it's from Cinderella. If there's gonna be snacks, I'm Gail. Wait, a party at the royal castle? Like, AKA a royal ball? <laughs> this is gonna be epic. Since you all made it through the whole royal scavenger hunt, the prize is... Yeah? yeah? Really cool. Yeah? yeah? Something we've never done before. Just tell us already. Oh, um, excuse me. The prize is that every single Friday, you guys get to come to the castle for a super fun, super royal, super special party. Wow! Mmm, I'd say the snacks here surely are delicious. Count us in. I just gotta check with my mom. Yeah, me too. Whoa, wait, speaking of my mom, we should really be heading back home. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go. It's way past our bedtime. Aw, wish you didn't have to leave. This was so much fun. Yeah, but we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Anytime, friend. Excuse me, Cinderella. You don't happen to have a carriage for our friends here, do you? Psst. Do I? How about this for a carriage? Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> this is awesome! See ya! Bye bye <sighs> That was epic! <laughs> well, Goldie, it's still technically your campout weekend. Hmm, OMG, I kind of totally forgot about it. <laughs> well, I guess we could still camp out. Let's do it! Tuckered out. Me too. Me three. The next morning, it was Goldilocks's actual birthday. Walla and Zorro had a special surprise for her. Happy birthday to Goldilocks. Happy birthday to you. You guys, this is too much. Blow out your candle and make a wish. Okay. <laughs> What'd you wish for? Zoro, she can't tell you. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing. One of my biggest birthday wishes already came true. Hanging out with you guys and going on an awesome adventure. Aww. Well, this has been so cool, but I guess we should pack up and head back home. The what? Mom! And how did you know to invite my new friends? Honestly, I have no idea who all these people are. But who doesn't love a party? <laughs> this has def been a party-filled day so far. Well, that's what birthdays are for. Happy, Happy birthday, Lulas! Aw, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. <laughs> Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. 
Ah! Yeah, monster, run! Thank you for chasing away those bullies, but I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Ah. Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Frankenstein. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. You've all heard that story, of course, but I'm here to tell you my version. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, long, long ago. Okay, it was actually pretty recent, but I like it when stories start that way. <laughs> anyway, once upon a time, not very long ago, there was a boy named Victor. Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. For example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime. Ew! Victor! That is so not cool. And then one time he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck. Ah, Victor? So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored. I want to make something, something big, Something bad, something epic. I know. Today I'm gonna create a monster! Let's keep reading. Victor went down to his laboratory, AKA our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. I should have enough to work with down here. Hmm, let's see. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise, forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet, but don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, blew, Fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life. It's alive! Oh no. Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's... It's... It's alive! <laughs> yes! And now we will unleash chaos onto the world! <laughs> okay, monster, let's go! Oh, are you hungry? Uh. Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Uh. Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But, oh, no buts. But there was a bun, a big one. A real, live monster was on the loose! How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. 
Everywhere the monster went, people screamed and ran. They all thought he was a big and scary monster, but really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him, and he couldn't help but be frightened. <gasps> Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... Ah! And that woke the monster. Ah! Oh no, run! The monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left. But then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah, monster, run! Take that, bad guy. I think that was his attempt at a smile. Thank you for chasing away those bullies. But I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? OK, I'm going to take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Well, recess is over, so I have to go. See ya. <laughs> oh no, you're sad. Okay, how about this? You stay. Stay here, okay? And I'll be back later. Can you nod and let me know you understand? Okay. Great. <laughs> School's out at three. I'll see you then. Back in the classroom, I made a list. Fun learning activities for monsters. Then after school, I met back up with the monster and we got to work. First, we practiced language arts. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. OK, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour. So let's move on to something else. Wow, this is so fun. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together, and then we shake. Ah. Oh. 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 Ah. OK, you're doing really great. But can you put me down? <sighs> Good, thanks. All right, next on the list was how do you high five? But let's move on. <laughs> we spent the rest of the afternoon doing our lessons. The monster learned how to sing. <laughs> and how to dance. Go monster, go monster, go, go monster. And we worked on hygiene. Yes, see, after you eat a whole handful of worms and bugs, it's good to wash your hands. <laughs> and speaking of eating, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day. From people like this gentleman, I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're going to get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. 
According to eyewitness reports, the monsters caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old-fashioned pitchfork and torch-wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah! yeah. Back to you, Chuck. Oh, dear! I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse, not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. <gasps> Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. Mama. Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, Right Foot Blue. Uh. Eh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. Uh. Then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. Ah! Well, that was weird. I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies, and now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Hey, keep it down in there. Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh-uh. What was that? Uh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Uh. Meatloaf. You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya mañana. Bye. <laughs> okay. Good night. Let's keep reading. Phew. That was close. <sighs> we can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. You seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big, sweet softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not going to wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> OK, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course. Ah. Perfect. Let's go. So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. Didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Chapter four, here we go. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some of their projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could stick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. Oh no, run! What do we have here? Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. But don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Uh, granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> uh, well, 
I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. Oh, hi guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard... Meow. <laughs> Come on, Gran. Time for bed. <laughs> yeah, that's a kitty. Let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh-oh. That's him. That's the monster. Get him. Whoa, this place is crazy. The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha! Ah, I'll get ya! But he missed. Phew! But then it landed. Ah! Hey! You stuck me! And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally lit another guy's pants on fire. Ah. It was chaos! Finally! We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Ah, uh, that's better. Phew, thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <coughs> yeah, okay. We'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know. Just one more stop. Come on, guys. Let's go to Professor Weirdly's. Yay! I'm so happy. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep. Awesome, right? Very impressive! Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. It was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He even joined the cheer team. <laughs> He was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. Wow, that was so much fun. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye.